Elsie and Justice has been one of my favorite parts of the recent Foresta arc, and they quickly became one of my favorite character dynamics in the series. I had high expectations for them, and Mashman delivered through and through. In this video, I'll go over both the individual characters, talk about the many parallels between the two, and finally, I'll close off with their future prospects and what I expect from them moving forward. Now, Elsie and Justice, let's talk about it. L.C. Crimson, the captain of the school fairy and one of the Rossian Sei Galactica, which are the most dangerous group of pirate captains in the series. She was introduced very early in the story and had a good mystery surrounding her character. She seemed to be very dangerous and had a scary reputation. We even see her threaten to kill one of her subordinates just for being too loud. We later find out that she was searching for Shiki for a reason the audience doesn't know yet, but unfortunately for her, he was already headed towards Pandanorma, a planet she says is already dead. During the Skull Fairy arc, we get a proper introduction to Elsie's character. Mashima used this arc to establish multiple ties Elsie has due to her history and pushed her to become one of the most influential characters to Shiki's journey towards Mother. The arc starts off with Elsie capturing the main crew using one of the biggest pirate ships I've ever seen. We learn that she got her infamous reputation by conquering the seven cosmic seas, which seems to be a formidable feat, even though we as the readers don't exactly know why it's so glorified. We then get a sneak peek into her pirate-like demeanor when she tells Shiki most of her hobbies are plundering, going to war, and plundering some more. She says that the main crew all belong to her now, and they will be sold as slaves in the planet Gilst. Mashma then dives deeper into her character by revealing some of the history she had with Ziggy and Shiki. He uses Elsie as a tool for the audience to learn more about the origins of Shiki, new information on Ziggy, and of course, new information on herself as well. In the past, Elsie met Ziggy on his return trip from Mother. He never made it to Mother, but he found Shiki and chose to raise him in Granville instead. He didn't want to continue to chase after Mother since he knew his life was soon coming to an end. Ziggy asked Elsie for a favor to give Shiki the ship when he's ready to explore the cosmos, and Elsie said she owed Ziggy a great depth of gratitude, so she easily agreed with doing this for Ziggy. As Shiki resisted getting the ship from her due to his own personal feelings, she reassures him that this one ship won't inconvenience her in the slightest, as she flexes her ginormous fleet. Now this fleet is humongous. I can't even count how many ships were on that panel. But after seeing that, the main crew was abruptly reminded that they're truly dealing with a proper top tier big shot in the verse. As the interstellar army approaches, she says she'll buy some time for Shiki and the others to escape. And with her debt repaid, she says she doesn't want to see him ever again. Now, she was most likely faking and wanted to cut off ties because of her extremely dangerous lifestyle being an Orasian says Galactica would put Ziggy's disciple, Shiki, in danger, and she wouldn't want to ruin what Ziggy left behind. Shiki, however, affirms that they're friends, and that he sees her in a positive light, which makes her smile and remembers what Ziggy said. Those who make it to mother will be reborn. I enjoyed this scene because it shows that Elsie has a kind heart and has to always face the burden of being branded a notorious pirate. The mystery behind Mother is also heavily teased, which is always a plus, since it makes the eventual reveal chapter one of my most anticipated moments in manga. I'll cover her scenes with Justice later in the video, but now we move on to her next major scene which takes place in the Eden's One arc. In the Eden's One arc, we get an even deeper insight on the context behind Elsie's relationship with Ziggy. During this arc, Ziggy was revived into something unknown and was going to annihilate the Eden Zero. Elsie then shows up and becomes the barrier protecting Shiki from the conflict between him and Ziggy. Ziggy, who is aware of just how powerful Elsie is, decides to leave safely until he gets enough power to win against her easily. Elsie comments on how disappointed she is that the person she looked up to ended up acting in the opposite way of the message they originally stood for. 
She enters the Eden Zero and we get a quick power flex from Elsie when Homura challenges her and got completely embarrassed by just her feet. Maybe next time Homura, maybe next time. We then move on to explore more of Elsie's history and discover she has not only met Ziggy before, but she has also met the Shining Stars and Baby Shiki. The Eden Zero took her in after she was made homeless by war, and even though she was only there for a few weeks, she said that they felt like a true family. She was entrusted with the ship because she was able to challenge Valkyrie despite her young age, and Ziggy also respected the strength of Elsie's heart. We then get a rough summary of just what started her pirate life. It was said that she wasn't very adept with managing the ship's functions, so she quickly ran out of provisions and ended up stealing food from a myriad of ports around the cosmos, and this of course led her to being branded a pirate. Then 10 years after these events, she ended up meeting with Shiki in the school fairy arc, and moving forward, we then get information on what happened after the school fairy arc, but from Elsie's point of view. Elsie said that she arrived at Ziggy's grave to tell him that she kept their 10 year promise, but she noticed some dark evil ether coming out of it. She ends up putting a tracker on the corpse, and this led to her being able to come right on cue when Ziggy was going to destroy Shiki earlier in the arc. She then tells the Shining Stars and Shiki that she is resolved to take down Ziggy as someone she owes her life to, and when Shiki gets the proper conviction, he should join her in their quest to stop Ziggy's terror. I'll cover her journey to the Al Cosmos later in the video, when I'm doing Justice's portion since there's a lot of him there in that part. But for now, let's recap all the major LC only scenes we've gotten so far in the Sakura Cosmos Saga. These arcs were incredibly important with establishing Elsie's character because we now have a nice timeline of the events in Elsie's life, proper goals and motivations that drive her character, as well as Mashima setting her up to be the most binded character to Shiki's fate and story that isn't on his crew. The timeline of her life goes through seven main milestones we as readers know up to the Eden 1 arc. First, her home planet was destroyed through war and she lost everything. Second, she met Ziggy during his return trip to Mother and he was carrying baby Shiki. Third, she was taken in by Ziggy's crew where she learned the joy of being in a family again and was able to challenge Valkyrie at the age and was also entrusted to give the ship to Shiki when he gets older. 4. She wanders space afterwards and establishes her notorious reputation as the menacing space pirate Elsie Crimson for the next 10 years. 5. She meets Shiki in the school fairy arc and gives him the ship as she promised. 6. She went to Ziggy's grave and put a tracker on him since she sent very evil at her. 7. She saved Shiki from Ziggy's attack and resolved to stop him as she journeys towards the Owl Cosmos. It was clear Elsie was going to become important down the line, but I'm surprised at just how much information we got on her before we really got the story going. Moving on to her goals and motivations, the core of her character is mainly due to the inspiration from Ziggy. She models most of her policies after him and heavily respects both him and the Shining Stars. We see this with how she handled the spy on her ship, where she was willing to take in anybody regardless of their background, since Ziggy did the same thing for her and she would never forget that kind of kindness. She also chased down Shiki due to the promise she made with Ziggy, and now she wants to chase down Ziggy and stop him herself due to the respect she has always had for him. All of her actions we've seen so far were driven by her relationship with Ziggy, and since she's on a journey to stop him, that doesn't seem to change anytime in the near future. Elsie as a character is also heavily tied to Shiki's story. She is one of the few characters that gave insight on Shiki's past, and she also has a similar idolization Shiki had with Ziggy. They both currently have the same goal of stopping Ziggy, and the crew history is heavily intertwined with hers, as seen by the Shining Stars helping raise Elsie, as well as her giving some information on what could have happened with Pino's origins. Now with that done, let's move on to Justice. Justice, the commander of the Angel Feather and one of the Arasian Se Interstellar, which is a powerful group of government agents that directly oppose the Arasian Se Galactica. He was introduced towards the end of the school fairy arc, and even though he didn't have nearly as much to his character before Foresta as compared to Elsie, there's still some pretty important things to note about his character early on in the series. To start off the buildup of Justice, Mashima portrayed him as a big opposition to space pirate Elsie, which on paper makes him the good guy. 
given how Mashima already established Elsie as a powerful character, it's easy to prop up justice on that same level given how his fleet size is very similar to Elsie's and also the fact that she doesn't seem to be able to beat him easily. Of course, this goes both ways. He seems to have a deep hatred and desire to lock Elsie up. And as he's tracking her down, this tells the reader that Elsie has either done a very grave crime in the past and he's just doing his job to lock her up, or she has specifically done something to justice and that makes him act disantagonistic towards her. Based on how his and her crew reacts, it implies that they've had this kind of relationship for a while now because this doesn't seem to be the first time interacting in this police versus pirate scenario. After Elsie escapes, we see Justice again reacting to what happened in Planet Gills. We got some more insight on his mentality when it comes to criminals and death. He scolded one of his subordinates for his lack of empathy for the many lives that was lost on Gills. He said even if they're mostly criminals, a life is still a life. This scene is good for Justice's character because most of his interactions we get in the series have to do directly with Elsie, but seeing how he reacts to other criminals apart from her and reacting in a way that's very caring and empathetic towards life really shows that he has qualities of true righteousness and a good moral compass. The next time we see Justice, he's being set up as a force to be reckoned with in the future. We start by getting just how strong his spy network is. He was able to come up with his own deductions that Shiki took out Draken, which was contrary to the newspaper that said Noah beat him instead, which everyone else believed. We also saw Spy Network in action with how he has been constantly monitoring the Eden Zero for many arcs throughout the story. He calls himself an ether master like Draken and Elsie which further emphasizes that he's truly a top tier in this verse. The Prayer Council is how the Rossian saves Interstellar meet to discuss their affairs and they've decided to chase after Elsie and stop her from causing problems of Nero, another Arasian says Galactica. Justice acclaims by the name of the Arasian says Interstellar that he will apprehend her. He says she has stolen everything away from him and he will kill her with his own hands. This is interesting because now we get confirmation that this is personal beef that they had with each other and he used the word kill instead of capture, showing his rage and hatred for her goes beyond just arresting a criminal for a crime, but leading far more towards a murder-bound retribution. Right before Foresta, Elsie and Justice interact one last time. There was a spy on Elsie's ship, and Mashima uses this situation to show how strong Elsie's ideals are, as well as how unshaken the conviction of the interstellar army soldiers are. We first saw the spy right after J.D. Talis, but it seems Elsie and her top guards, Hyoga and Gowen, already knew what he was up to. Elsie explains to him that she welcomes all kinds of people on board, regardless of their background, even former government spies will be allowed to become her family. If the spy can only prove his loyalty, she will allow him to stay, but instead the spy declares that Elsie's team will never beat the interstellar army, and she just lets him go back to justice without harming him. This whole scene was good, because Hyoga and Gowen said if she wasn't so open to anyone joining, this would have never happened, but she affirms that she will continue to let people on the ship since she would never forget the kindness the Eden Zero has showed her back when she needed help the most, and she believes that the bonds you establish while in the ship together makes you real family. This further emphasizes the great impact Ziggy has on her character, and having such unyielding, heartwarming ideals like this makes her very charismatic. Another thing to pay attention to is the fact that the spy didn't fold. Elsie is one of the strongest, most charismatic characters in the series, and the spy lived on her ship for a good amount of time, yet he still held strong while surrounded by nothing but enemies, and pledged that the organization he belongs to, the Interstellar Army, will forever be unbeaten at the end. This is important to note, because if someone in Elsie's position couldn't get the spy on her side for even a little bit, it goes to show that the people in the Interstellar Army, at least in the spy's position or higher, are very resolved and headstrong in their ideals for their cause. Of course, this by association boosts up Justice's conviction, since him being far higher up the ladder than the spy, as well as seeing how strong his motivations were up to this moment, helps highlight the point that he's most likely never switching sides, no matter what. Finally, we arrive at Foresta, where all the seeds Mashima has been planting with Justice and Elsie all sprouted into something amazing. The first scenes we get from Elsie and Justice both have them doing their ultimate attack, Grand Chariot. This is the first time we're seeing something from the personal movesets and it happens to be the same move. 
this was an insane reveal to me because having identical powers wasn't something I even considered. This alone links both the characters even deeper than I originally thought. Despite their powers being identical, the reason why they were used at their introduction was for completely polarizing reasons. Elsie was sad that the robots were mindlessly attacking, but she affirms that she has to protect her family first and destroys the robots quickly with Grand Cherry. Justice, however, realizing what a potential threat Chiki could be in the future, uses his authority as the Arasian Se Interstellar in an attempt to eradicate Chiki for general peace. This contrast is interesting because the evil pirate Elsie is using one of her strongest techniques to fight for the safety and protection of those who she sees as family whereas Justice is using one of his strongest techniques to kill for the duty and obligation he has for the police force that keeps the universe safe from these pirates. One that fights for her family and the other that fights for his own justice. An interesting dynamic and we continue to get a lot more information regarding their powers, history and their overall relationship. We learn that the Arasian Se Interstellar have the special privilege of eradicating any target they deem as evil which honestly makes them just as dangerous as the Rossian says Galactica will also kill whoever they want. We also learned that both Elsie and Justice have the ability called Star Drain, which allows them to absorb the planet's ether and turn it into battle gear. It was said that this power is equal to the ones feared back in the Dark Ages called Heavenly Body Magic, magic that allows you to control the stars. This skyrockets both Elsie's and Justice's battle potential through the root by having such a powerful and versatile ability. Before the final clash of Elsie and Justice, let's talk about another layer of the parallels, which is their crew. Their crew is a small extension of both Elsie and Justice's characters. Elsie has her top two members, Hyoga and Goen. Similar to her who used to be a princess, they both had positive backgrounds of a firefighter and a doctor, but all three of them ended up as space pirates. Elsie's crew all believe in her and her ideology, She's the one who unites them and keeps everyone linked together. Justice's top two members, Creed and Victory, similar to his name, are all called after what they represent. Justice's crew believes in their own personal principles, but they still fall under the umbrella of the main interstellar ideology of protecting the peace of the cosmos. These crews clash and we see their physical powers and their ideologies butt heads. Creed's psychokinetic ether is countered by Gowen's ice ether, and Victory's titan powers goes even with Hyoga's fire powers. After the physical stalemate, they start their mental battle. Hyoga and Gowen claim to fight for their honor as Princess Elsie's guards and their belief in Elsie, while Victory and Creed fight believing in their own personal success and their own set of beliefs. We then get more ideological clashing later after Hamura is saved by Creed. Creed says he doesn't kill people for no reason like the pirates do, but Hyoga rebuttals and saying that they lock people up for no reason though. Victory argues that they have the right to lock her up since she's associated with dangerous groups like the Ross and Saves Galactica, and Gowen said he doesn't know who gave them that right, but they won't ever yield to a power that wants to steal their freedom. This talk was great because it showed both the point of views of the respective crews, and just like the captains, they're both at a balance where their beliefs won't fall to each other. Creed and Victory value their job and keeping peace by stopping people who they deem as bad guys, while Dowen and Hyuga value their family and Elsie, and will stop whatever gets in the way of their freedom. I like this because there really isn't a wrong answer. The interstellar army are the good guys, but they lock up or kill people who they personally deem as the bad guys. You can say this is how the Rotten State Galactica move as well. But as long as the interstellar army focus on keeping civilian lives a priority, the people will always support and see the interstellar army as the good guys. Now let's go back to the Elsie vs Justice clash we got in Foresta. They both summon their light blades and go at each other's throats, further emphasizing the two sides of the same coin relationship they have. While they're clashing, we get a vast amount of information on their histories, all dumped at once. Justice claims that his beef with Elsie all stems from Elsie betraying their fatherland and causing a war that ended up destroying their planet. He argues that if she had just waited until they were a bit older, he could have handled the corruption the government was doing and saved both their kingdoms and the planet. Elsie, however, counters by saying that they were too young and naive to trust that kind of plan and she felt that it was her duty to let the people know what was going on. She also says the whole K-Day cosmos would be in danger if she let the government run free. 
what makes this conflict powerful is not only are they both correct in their own personal point of view, but we as readers have no way of confirming which one would even be the wrong answer. Elsie's plan shed light on the government's crimes to the citizen and ended up saving the KD Cosmos. Looking at that point of view, she did the right thing. Justice's plan, however, looked to save the planet as well, not just the cosmos, and Elsie's plan did destroy everything they both knew and loved. So it begs the question, would Justice have really stopped the corruption if given a few more years? Looking at it from that point of view, he was doing the right thing. This beef looks like something that can't be solved by mere words, since both sides are very justified and most likely never going to concede their stance. But Mashima does something very surprising by introducing a potential outlet that can stop their feud, and then immediately squashes it, which further heightens their antagonistic feelings towards each other. And that outlet is love. As kids, James Holloway, aka Justice, was arranged to be married to Elsie. She teases him about a kiss, but later on decides that they should save it for when they're older. The kiss never did happen, but she says how about the kiss right now, and it might spark some forgiveness in both their hearts. Now, love is a very powerful emotion, and this could honestly be the key to solving the issues, but as they kiss, they both end up stabbing each other with their blades. They were both thinking of killing the other while using a kiss as a distraction, but they both ended up taking heavy damage instead. Their next words solidified their beef as something that can't be solved easily at all. Justice says that he knew a kiss wouldn't make him forgive Elsie for her crimes, and exclaimed that he would be the one to kill her. Elsie then agrees and says it seems that it is their fate to fight to the death. This scene was absolutely amazing to me and it is what completely made me fall in love with this Elsie and Justice dynamic. Love is always something on the table when it comes to solving conflicts between childhood friends or former partners. Mashima took away this possibility in their first face to face interaction and he did it in a way that tested both the resolves and both the convictions in taking each other out. Justice and Elsie both try to kill each other on the same page as their long-awaited first kiss. And the stark difference in the scenes on that page was a great way to highlight just how deep the roots of the conflict is planted and pretty much filters out all other peaceful alternatives in resolving this issue. This makes me very excited for the future since violence seems to be the only way their conflict is set up to end. Now, let's get into the future prospects of Elsie and Justice. The first thing will be their powers. As mentioned earlier, Star Drain is an insane ability that lets them drain the ether of the planet they're on. Every planet has different kinds of ether, so their ability can be scaled differently depending on what kind of planet they steal ether from. This gives them a huge range of potential power and overall makes their battle kit very interesting. Another thing to pay attention to is their potential. Through Holy, we learn that Elsie is the youngest Orasian Saiyan Galactica member and Holy was saying in 5 or 10 years, she could be an even more formidable opponent than she currently is. Justice is in a similar situation as well, where it was implied that he was the youngest member of the Rossian Saiyans Interstellar, since they all refer to him as Little Justice. In the future, we can most likely see these two reach even higher heights than we saw in Foresta. We also have not seen Justice and Elsie use Overdrive, and they are both Ether Masters, so it is clear they are hiding a lot of their abilities. We also need to get more on their backstory. As they continue to clash in the future, we might get more and more context to the war that destroyed their planet. We still have to know what the government was up to, who fought in the war, and why the K-Day cosmos was in danger, and how their planet got destroyed. With their beef being confirmed as something that not even love can stop, I believe that the numerous conflicts that they will have from this point on will be full of amazing content and just straight up gas. The journey of Justice and Elsie is just starting and I'm absolutely excited for this ride. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to show your support and make sure to click that notification bell to not miss any of my uploads. Thanks again and I'll catch you later. Peace.